Hey guys, this is Joe Jaguar. Angeles. <laughs> what? Okay, this is Joe Jaguar. Angeles. And no, we gotta do it again. You gotta point for it. Joe Jaguar. And Angeles. And today, this is for our Astro fans. Yes. So this is going to be the top 11 things that Angeles has seen through my telescope or the top 11 things I have shown her through my telescope. Now, I just wanted to put it out there that she does not, she won't be able to find anything by herself. Nor if I just gave her the telescope and say, fine, she, I haven't taught her that. So in the future, very soon, I got to actually show her how to work an altazimuth mount, an EQ mount, because she doesn't really know that. Usually I find it and then I show it to her. She knows how to focus mm -hmm. and she's use the slow motion control a little but finding it she really can't but this video is for you guys that's been in the hobby between like brand new maybe up to two years these are the best things to look at and what she's gonna do I'm gonna say one name at a time and she's gonna tell you what she thought as a brand new person to this hobby one out of five stars five stars it was an amazing view yeah. one star was okay three stars was like yeah good yeah so something like that one to five what she re recommends or remembers sorry okay while we do this we're going to be eating yeah we're gonna eat because we haven't had lunch yet yes and we thought we could do this video while eating because we haven't done one of those in a while okay enjoy Bazito. okay one of the first things i think i showed her when we started going out or dating was the planet venus now, I don't know if you remember, that was in Albion. Yes. And I even have a picture, I'll show you her, and then I'll show you guys now. Okay, the planet Venus looked something like that. Yes. And I will show you a picture right here. But what did you think about it? Well, Venus, it looks very similar to the moon. And then in the time that we were, he showed me, it was in March, I think so, around March. And it was yeah. almost gone, no, Venus. Maybe. Right? It was the living. And it was one of my first things together with the moon. And I, I cannot really picture like the difference between Venus and the moon. Actually, mostly what I remember, it was almost the same. Okay, one out of five, what would you say? Three. Okay. Next was the planet Jupiter. Jupiter. Now you obviously, I don't need to show you a picture. You remember yeah, what yeah, Jupiter yeah, looks yeah, like? Yeah. So I will put a picture here for you guys. But what did you think of Jupiter? It was nice. I liked it. I have my favorite. That one is the one that is going to get the five stars. But yeah, it was nice. I think so. I, I will, I will qualify like four. Okay, she says four out of five. So that's definitely one of the best things for you guys with small, medium telescopes, brand new people to look at. Mm -hmm. Now, this is probably actually the fir first was probably the moon. Yeah. Okay. So next is the moon. I'll put a picture here. But I'm sure everybody has seen the moon. It should be your first object. But for me, it was very nice because it's big, and I haven't seen the different faces of the moon. And I like it more when it's like the half, like a quarter moon, half quarter moon. moon. Yes. Okay. Because like this, I can see more the craters. And but and also I could be able to take my own pictures with my with my cell phone. It was easier to follow and to to be able to feel like a more tangible. I give him a five. I, I really like it to see them. Okay, five out of five, guys. Okay, next is probably the showpiece that everybody is amazed. And sometimes people even think you're cheating and you're putting a picture on the lens for brand new people. And this is Saturn. Saturn. What, what did you think of that? I love it. When I saw the first time the Saturn, I love it. 
and 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 I could see what what most amazed me was the rings around. And when I see that between the little tiny, how do you call the the, 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 the separation between the little the separation in the ring is called the Cassini division. Yeah, the Cassini. It was amazing. I I really like it. This is, and I haven't seen like different tones, like a little more whitish, like a little more orangey, and with the different uh, telescopes. It's one of my favorite things. Saturn is amazing. Five. I agree. Okay. Next was the planet. Mars. Now we've used two different telescopes. Mm -hmm. One was a little 80 millimeter Skywatcher ED, and then we used a six inch. Yeah, after. I was amazed because it looks like a little bit very similar to the sun. It's red, um, um, but of course a little farther. Like it's not like the sun that you see, like really huge. But I, I like it. I like it Mars too. I will give it like a four. Okay, four is pretty good. But in reality, sometimes Mars is very tricky, especially for brand new people. And the reason maybe why she gave it a four is because on one of them, we use my six inch apochromatic telescope. Most people don't have anything that big because on that second video, we saw some brown spots mm -hmm. on it. Now, most people that don't have that big or quality telescopes, it just looks like a small, like our first time. It looks red, then it's a little round, and that's really it. So for most people, it might be a two or three maximum because they don't have the big stuff. For for Mars, it's a bit tricky. But okay. I have him. <laughs> but, okay. So next will be the Pleiades Star Cluster. Now that one, I uh, let me show you a picture. was this one. Oh, yeah, and yeah. that's the one one time you said it kind of looks like an exclamation mark if you're looking at it yes. sideways. And there goes Joey over our heads. So oh. I will show a picture of the Pleiades star cluster. It is a big cluster. Most telescopes cannot see it because it's actually too powerful. So you need a really short telescope or something that could have a big wild field of view. Like I said, probably 98% of telescopes can't fully see it because they're too powerful. But what did you think about that cluster? Yeah, actually it was nice because we haven't seen it with different telescopes. And as you say, we have the opportunity to see it. And then the other thing was like, you're like a stand, like a little tiny thing. But uh, yeah, I really like it. It's, it's, it was very nice. I, I will give him a four. Okay. Four is pretty good. Next on our list is we were camping this time mm -hmm. up north and we used an oh, yeah. 8-inch SCT to view this. This is called the Ring Nebula. Kind of looked like that donut. It mm. looked like that guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was nice, it was very nice. Now, did you find it a little dim? Yeah, it was dim. Uh, but, it, but, but I like it, it was very nice. And, and that day in the camp, and because we were in a, in, a, in a gray zone, we saw so many things beautiful. And, and we could see also the, what they call the galaxy? The Milky Way? The Milky Way. It's yeah. beautiful that day. I really like it. But she, I think she found it a bit dim. And remember guys, that's in a gray zone with an eight inch telescope. But it could be also be that her being brand new, looking at these really dim stuff in outer space, your first time is gonna, it's gonna be a little tricky and it's gonna be dim. And eventually as you keep, it's like with anything, roller skating, bike riding, right? any hobby that you do, the more you do it, then the easier it becomes. Uh -huh. So that was her first time looking at the ring nebula, looking like a donut, but even in an eight inch and dark sky, she found it like kind of dim. She, I, in that video, I think we did a video going up north in the darkest skies, part one and two, uh -huh. you can see she, I think, thought it was like, okay, I think I could see it, this and that. What do you give it? What did you give it? Or did you rate it yet or no? Yeah, Out I think so because maybe, I, as you say, I was a beginner and I couldn't really appreciate it and his total. 
I will give him a three and a half. Okay, fair enough. Mm. Next, again, it was that same weekend up north camping. And this is called the Andromeda Galaxy. This galaxy is about 2.5 million light years away. That means when we're looking at it, us looking at it, or if somebody's in a planet in that galaxy looking at our galaxy in the Milky Way, they're not looking at us how we are now. They're looking at us two and a half million years ago. Mm. That's how long the light takes for us to reach them and them to reach us. Wow. So we're, humans weren't even born yet. There's probably cavemen or there's kind of, I don't, not dinosaurs, but there's kind of, you know, it was back then. So anyway, I'll put a little picture here. Now we did look at this in a, the 80 millimeter. It was kind of small, but then we looked at it, it's, you know, in the eight inch. And I don't think we saw the full thing because it was too much power, but we saw about 80%. I don't yeah. know if that Yeah, yeah, I that. remember. That one, it was nice. And I remember right now what you just mentioned. Yeah, it was like, wow. Like, that we can be able to see it like so far away. It's, it's, it's very nice. This is like, this picture that he's showing you is like taken like with a big and huge and, and, and on the space. Then they take those kind of pictures. Well, long exposure. It means that the camera opens up or the chip if it's a electronic and it stays open and that light collects over hours yeah. where our eyes can't do that our yeah. eyes are just a snapshot but, but still i find that our eyes are amazing guys when i see across the, the the camera how it takes and how we see it it's a big difference like i see i see like a one maybe i don't know if it would be too much to say 100 times better but anything whatever we we picture, I see it much nicer, like with our eyes. We are really gifted. And I like it. I, I, I will give him actually a four and a half. Okay, I agree. It's a very good galaxy for you guys to start with. It's, you can actually see it with your eye if you know exactly where to look. And you have gotta be in a dark, dark sky. And it's not gonna pop up like the picture but it will be like hey, there's a little hazy patch up there if you really know what to look for mm -hmm. but anyway next on our list is the Hercules cluster now this is a cluster of about a million suns like our Sun uh, but our Sun is alone but there are like clusters where there's like hundreds or thousands it depends but this one is about a million suns packed in a very tight space. Now again, we use an eight inch telescope and even with that size in a dark sky, she was kind of like, I think I see the individual stars, but I'm not sure. Again, watch the video. I'll put a little picture here, but this is just to give you an idea, babe. Do you remember looking like that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Very nice, it was very nice. I really like it, and, and now that I see the picture, yes, I, I, I could see like exactly like it was like a million stars, many, 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 like okay. a big closer. Yeah, it was. I, I will give him a, a five. I really like it. A, a, a five. five. Okay, I'm surprised. I thought maybe because she couldn't see all the little pinpricks of individual stars, I could have, and that's why I ordered a 12 inch this time for going camping, because eight to 12. It's probably like 200% more light gathering power. Now she should see like, wow, okay, I see every star. It's like millions there. But anyway, going to our next list is the, this one was pretty recently. It was the Orion Nebula. The brightest nebula in the sky and you can see it with your eyes. And this one I had to explain to her. We saw this with a 12 inch just uh, about a month and a half ago. And I was trying to explain to her it was because Orion looks like a man standing. Yeah. And in between, like where his crotch is, there's a, a hazy patch, and you can even see it with your eyes, even in the worst light polluted zone. It took a little while for me for her to understand exactly where I was pointing to yeah, until yeah, I got yeah. my laser. But this is what it looks like. Do you remember that? It was kind of looked like a C mm -hmm. with 
like wings and these see those three stars i think those you kept on getting it confused with the belt stars yes yes. but yes. those are would be much bigger but anyway do you kind of remember that one yes okay it was very nice but it, yeah as, a, as, as he said it was kind of hard for me to understand and to realize what he was talking about uh but i, I really like it I, I will give him a four Okay, a four. Okay, this one. We saw this one about seven or eight months ago. Her friend came. Um, mm, for the comet? Yes, yeah. exactly. So, Neowise. Comet Neowise. So, this was, I think, was her first comet. You, could, you couldn't see it with the eye in Toronto. Uh, we had to use, like, binoculars or I had a very low-power telescope like an 80 millimeter and the lowest power I can get it like a, a two inch 56 millimeter eyepiece or maybe it was a 32 millimeter eyepiece, I don't know. But it looked, um, well, I think I don't have a picture but of it. But still, I think, remember, is we can't be able to see it with the eyes or we have to no. like the, no. No, we, we, couldn't, see we it. couldn't see it with the eyes. No. We put the cell phone to the sky and put a 10 second exposure yeah. and then we could see a little tiny thing. But through the telescope, we could see like a little, yeah. A little comment. Do you remember what that one was about? What do you think of Comet Neowise? You yeah, remember yeah, what yeah, the yeah, picture yeah, is now, right? Yeah, it was nice because it, it goes like a, like, like a little like, like falling. Yeah. So we couldn't see it with the eye. If you were in dark skies, you could see it with the eye. But from a light polluted city like uh, Toronto and other big cities, we couldn't see it. Uh, it was only through the telescope or with a 10 second exposure on our cell phone. Yes. Was that your first comment that you seen? Yes. Okay, what do, you, what do you give it? I will give him a four. Now, just to remind you guys, the first comment that I seen was Comet hale in 96, 1996, not 18 or 17, right? And 1997 was Comet Hakataki. Now, those two were so bright I would say, babe, about a thousand times brighter than that. Mm -hmm. That you could see it in Toronto, like through big cities, and it was even brighter than the picture. You could see it and it looked like those movies when you see an omen in space, and you could see it just with your eyes. You didn't need with cell phone. Exactly. Yeah, you could, and it was way brighter than what we seen through the telescope. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. So those uh, comets come once every hundred years if you're lucky. But I remember those, it's like... Actually, one of them is the, the close to your attention, no? To the astronomy. No, that was another one. And that was in, because uh, I just said 1996 and 97. When I got interested, oh, yeah, it was 93. Yeah, yeah. It's Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. That's the comet that crashed into Jupiter. Yeah? Ah, okay. So that's what got me interested in 93 in astronomy. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Um, that's it. We are done. Oh, wait. There was one final thing. Yeah. Yes. I also would like to, to ask you a question. Wait, wait. But there's one more. Last thing I forgot is the sun. Now, oh, you, you've yeah. seen the sun in the sun uh, glasses and yeah. through the solar telescope. So go ahead. Talk about the sun. I saw the, the the sun. I told him that I was looking like a like a like an orange filter. Just a filter, yeah. But after he showed me all the glares and the and the and the explosions, no? Let me just say. Yeah, like the. And then I also I, I start seeing like the little tails. How do you call? Uh, like the fires and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I really like it. That. Well, remember the first time that I showed you was at Albion. Yes. And the problem was it was a little bit of thin clouds and the sun was like getting about an hour to s setting. Mm -hmm. So it's not the best time. When we did it again here, it was up on the sky and it was perfectly clear in summer. Yeah. So then that's when we saw the flares. Yes, and I really like it. I said, wow. It's amazing, and also a little more the, the like the boiling thing. I could see it, and then I, I will give him a five. This is amazing. Now remember, guys, there's two ways to view the sun. One is a white light solar filter, and that lets you see the sun in 
a nice orangey color, which is great. But if you want to see the the sun with the flares shooting out, you need a solar, like a it's called a hydrogen alpha uh, telescope, and then it becomes fairly expensive. The cheapest entry ones start at at least a thousand dollars and go up from there. However, too remember, guys, a lot of people don't realize that the sun is 150 million kilometers away. And when you look at the flare, if the sun is this big, if the circle, I don't know, it's what I'll make a circle that big, and that flare is only two, three millimeters, really that flare could be like a million kilometers big. But sometimes people see, oh, that little tiny thing, they don't understand the. If we were closer, yeah. we would like burn. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of people don't realize when I say you can see flares, we're probably thinking of a flare. No, but in the eyepiece comparing to the sun, because remember, the sun is a million times bigger than Earth. So that flare that's like two, three millimeters tall, four millimeters, whatever, is millions of kilometers long. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you wanted to ask me a question before we close? Yes. No? Yes. Okay. Babe, after one year, yeah. over a year that you have been doing uh, astro videos, how do you feel? You you perform like it, like how you feel the confidence the mat, even the mature thing for the first video that you did it and now that you're doing your your last video of astronomy. So you mean for YouTube? Yeah, for YouTube. How do you feel? It's a big learning curve, and the reason is, um, first, you know, my first camera wasn't that great. If you guys go back and look at my first twenty videos, you see. It was a little grainy. One reason was, you know, the camera said HD. Now I'm not, you know, perfectly, you know, influenced in like camera wise and, and that type of thing. So I said HD, I didn't want to spend thousands not knowing if I was going to stay on YouTube long or short, you know, people get out of stuff. So I just bought an entry level camera. Then I could see and other people have noticed you know, the quality is not the greatest and I upgraded to a better quality with a sound bar. And even then I still had some people saying wasn't the best um, and I had zero editing. So there's a lot of things that if you guys are even thinking about YouTube making videos, you need to understand that. And even a couple of my videos, I didn't have a light source, which is very important for filming. So it's, it's like you have to have to do YouTube, it's like you need to have proper equipment, you have to have the proper lighting. Then editing is a whole new ball game. And even now... It's still we're learning. Yeah, it's like it's I just... We, we see another video for another YouTuber, and they do like here, that, like a splash, like a message, like... It's still we, we, we're in diapers. <laughs> it, it's, um... Even in the last couple days, I was changing my thumbnails. That's the picture you see the entry level of the video so you can get people to click on your video. I just was redoing some of those. Um, and some of those videos are six, nine months, ten months old. So it's like you're always learning a little bit, you're always getting a little bit better, but it is very hard. Uh, again, getting their equipment, if it's the cameras, even talking. You have to be comfortable in front of a camera. Yes. You have to know how to talk um, because a lot of people think um, well, we, we don't rehearse. We, we, our recordings is done one time. We do some editing, but we don't do 10 times rehearsal. Yes, uh, do it over. we don't repeat it like this, like 10 times this dinner. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's hard. So it's like, it's, it's very, and also another thing that's very, very hard is coming up with ideas. Now, if you're talking about the Astro channel is, yeah, what, what do you want to talk about? What is different from this? video than the last video or another video you did. It has to be different to uh, people want to watch it. You know, it, it's hard to come up with ideas, film yourself, you have to talk good, you have to be in, in the camera, uh, you know what I mean? Like you got to be like, face happy, whatever they call it. Editing has to be down, your lighting, I don't know, your equipment. It's like you waste a lot of time, a lot of energy and you make absolutely no money probably for at least two years before you see even one red penny of anything. So you really have to like doing it. And I think I'm still growing. I'm still slowly um, developing. Yeah, develop it, I think it takes many years for you to like, and oh, boom, I should have yes. done that a little better. Because I look at my first entry videos and it's like, 
uh, you know, the sound could have been better. The volume could have been better. The editing, there is none. It's like... They were actually not like a pre-started, not like the first one. Like right now we, we start like after like adding the pictures and... I didn't have any of that, yeah, no. but you know, but I, I keep on hearing a lot of people, even with the old videos, especially my old Astro videos, I still have good information that is helping people out. So that's the number one thing why they're still good is because the information is good. So even though the editing I had zero, no, no like pictures, videos, no title tracks, no entry music, uh, nothing of that, or even the mistakes. Then it was a camcorder, and you couldn't break it up and edit any mistakes you made. So when you upload it, it went up. So every mistake you did is uploading too. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I think it's a learning curve. I still like it. I don't think it's for everybody. Uh, most of the people I know don't even want to be in my videos because they don't want to be on TV or internet. Um, yes. So, but I'm, I'm comfortable. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, it's like I me too. In the beginning, I, actually, I'm not shy at all. But uh, it still, for me, was kind of awkward, and also my voice it was very low. Your voice, I think, still sometimes you could talk a little louder. I think. <laughs> uh, okay. That I think you could do. But besides that, I think you're comfortable. You you don't mind doing the crazy dumb things that I come up with sometimes, and um, that's it. Anything else you want to know, babe? No. no. Okay. So again, guys, this video is for you brand new people that are into the hobby. It would be good to watch this because these are going to be the 10, 11, or 12 best things to look at starting out. And those I'm are... Both of you are beginners like me. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so this is the Joe Jaguar... Angeles. Show. And if you want to see more of our funny, Don't forget to videos, like us. Don't forget to like us. Sorry, baby. Like us. Comment and subscribe. Don't forget to like us. Oh, yes. Because in one video, go see it, our anniversary video. She tells you guys not to like us. And come, like. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. And what do we say? Out. Out. <laughs>